Hello, I am here with the Axeman, and we have a copy of The Legend of Zelda Outlands. This even has an official Nintendo seal of quality on it. This is a wonderful ROM hack for the game Legend of Zelda. We're going to play it with Taskbot. So this cartridge was provided to me by someone named T2. The origins of the cartridge itself are rather mysterious, so we will talk about that later. So what I'm going to do here is start this run. This was made by Baxter. The tool assistant speed run was created by him all the way back in 2009 on FCEU. I, I, was a, I converted it from FCEU to FCEUX and then dumped it from there. And uh, this is a tool assistant speed run that's actually quite a lot of fun. So I'm going to power on the console. Let's do it this way. <laughs> power on the console. Do, 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 do. Come on. There we go. Power on the console. Hold the reset button down. Run the run. And let go. I have a reset script I can do, use as well. So this ROM hack is very interesting. It uses a lot of the same sprite concepts, but reworks almost everything. The game engine is mostly the same. Um, some of the same glitches that you can see in a tool-assisted speedrun of a normal Legend of Zelda run are still present here. But a lot of things are uh, advanced, I guess might be the right way to phrase it. Okay, so right here, we have to press uh, start and, what is it, up and... Up little, and A. Up and A, yeah, that's right, uh, up and A on the second controller. And uh, my best set of controller cables and my other best set of controller cables are all someplace else. <laughs> They're all on the East Coast right now. So what I have is this god-awful setup. I will very carefully take this camera and move it over here so you can see this. So this is Taskbot over here. So here's Taskbot, look in the lower left corner of your screen. I have this god-awful mess of cables. <laughs> you can see that it is this hacked-together breadboard and a really janky conversion setup. So these cables were originally uh, designed to work with True's NES SNES replay device. This is a converter board made by Micro 500. This is True's um, visualization board. And this one down here is the one that's made by Micro 500. So I'm just going to point it at this one that's made by Micro 500 because it is the most interesting to look at, frankly. Um, so now you'll be able to see what buttons are being pressed a little bit better in the lower left-hand corner. Uh, ignore that music player next to it. We're not actually listening to that, although we could be. So a lot of the screen wraps that are common in the original Le Legend of Zelda are still possible here as well. This is being run on the TAS TM32 device, which was buried under that mountain of cables I just showed you. So I have some submission notes here from Baxter. And again, this is all the way back in 2009. Wow. Uh, what's amazing is that this has really stood the test of time. Now, there might be some improvements that can be made now based on tech that's been discovered over the last few years, but um, he does both a first quest and a second quest. So this game is, is actually kind of interesting. Could we sync this? Could we enter a, um, an arbitrary name and resync it? I don't know. Ooh, okay. That could be fun. Yeah. And so, pretty easy to test, too. Yeah, and Tina Hex, I'm glad you're here. Let me mute my other microphone here. Uh, I'm glad to see you here. You just made a V60? Uh, you made a V60, huh? I'm not sure what you mean by that. He put a lot of sprites in here. I don't know how he's got so many enemies on the screen without the uh, engine completely f flipping out. Also, that was a nice hit. Oh. Okay, got it, Tina Hex. I thought he was going to biff it right there. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I know that this is going to sink. Unless I do something dumb. But there's always that bit of me going, oh, but what if it's de it desyncs right in the middle of recording this? So, uh, one of the things that's obviously uh, hard for me to do on the cuff, on, on the fly here, is off the cuff try to do really good commentary. I haven't practiced it, the Axeman hasn't practiced it. But there, this is a reasonably well known ROM hack that's been around for a long time. I'm not entirely certain about the first year this appeared. The final version of this, I believe, came out in something like 2006. But uh, this task was originally submitted in 2007, and somehow 
I'm not entirely certain about what happened here. Uh, uh okay. Um, yeah, there was some argument about whether or not it should be submitted. And it was not submitted until 2009. Uh, so, or, I mean, it wasn't, uh, wasn't accepted for publication on test videos until 2009, in part because ROM hacks are always a little bit of a touchy issue for people. Um, this one in particular is taking it to a, a different level of extreme. Because I'm literally playing it on what looks like an original cartridge. <laughs> um, so I got this cartridge from a collector. Uh, he asked to be remain anonymous other than the name T2, Terminator 2. So T2 provided this cartridge along with some other random ones that were really interesting. Um, this is obviously... Wait, we're in level 9 now? Yes. Do you need to do all the other dungeons, or can you just skip to level 9? Well, in this case, you can skip to level 9. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it's only the first quest. Oh, oh, let's see. So there's more to go. Also, there were some serious glitches when it went through that earlier doorway. You can block clip into 9 in this hack? Huh. I see. So that's how I got here. I'm glad you know about that. This is a really interesting ROM hack. I think this needs its day in the sun. <laughs> I mean, it's short, it's... It's definitely RPG-esque, even if it's not fully RPG. Um, I, think they'd, I think they'd be okay with this, right? Yeah, I think it's worth a try. Oh, and bombs don't hurt you. No. Oh. I did not know that. What? I yeah. guess you just push on it? You don't even have to blow it up? Yeah, there seem to be... <clears throat> push-through walls, too. Who is? Uh, if we decide to submit it, we'll probably do it as just a Twitch VOD, since that keeps the traffic down. And then we'll have the submissions committee at... RPG Limit Break vet this for their entertainment level. If it meets their entertainment level, which of course we're not providing good commentary at all, we haven't practiced that yet. Um, if this meets their requirements, then we will submit it. And wow, that is really janky. Um, Link, I think you might be having some issues there. Um, if we submit this and they accept it, we'll uh, then uh, sh uh, put the version from RPG Limit Break on the channel on the YouTube channel. What? That was interesting. Now we're gonna use our arrows. Apparently. So that wasn't even the... Oh. Okay. This ROM hack is weird. <laughs> the Triforce of Power. The fairy? At last, the Thunderbird is gone. <laughs> Our world is safe. Oh. But bear with us. This isn't the end. Look at the viz boards. <laughs> he was having fun. Okay, so now he's starting a new quest. <coughs> so this is the second quest. Hey, Daza! Okay, I like that touch of dancing to the music. That's actually nice. Oh, yeah. Okay, a random fairy. So the second quest, I'll try to... I'll try to make the best of this I can. Um... For those who don't like getting to places that you aren't supposed to, the second quest quest has a lot of this. I'm sorry. <laughs> a for, lot less. For the, a, a lot less of this. For those who didn't like getting to places that you aren't supposed to, the second quest has a lot less of this. The levels in the second quest aren't numbered from 1 to 9. Instead, they spell out Outland C. So U is the second dungeon and C is the ninth. C stands for challenge. First off, Lynx goes to level U to get some meat. 
The meat is obtained without any weapons, which wouldn't normally be possible. You would at least need the either, either the boomerang, bombs, or candle. I think the intention of the creator was to visit level O first where you can get the boomerang. I also use the glitch to get a key. After getting the meat, there is an up plus A reset which, with the save to start over again, which we just did. Now that we have meat, Link goes to level O. After getting some keys, the boomerang is obtained. There's even a room where you have to kill all bats with the boomerang, which is pretty neat. So we'll see that in a sec. By the way, thank you so much for people who have suffered through the long troubleshooting and all of the other craziness that went wrong. We actually have 79 people watching, which is awesome. Thank you very much for sticking around, guys. I do appreciate it. What is chasing him? That is... Those things look kind of terrifying. Like little... Actually, those are the pill bugs from, from Zelda 2. Oh, is that what those are? <laughs> I see. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose so, Majestic. Okay, this is supposed to happen in the aftermath of Zelda 2. Nice. Oh, okay. That would make more sense. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, not bad. Kill all the bats of the boomerang, which is pretty neat. It was actually pretty hard to get the room like that. Then the meat is used, and Link can obtain the ladder. <laughs> okay. So, that gets us out of there. Now, that we have the meat, let's see, I'm sorry, with the ladder, Link can reach new, le new places in level U, like the place where Zelda has hidden, had hidden the flute. The glitch is used to get here faster after getting the flute reset, so that's what we're seeing next. I guess I'm a ahead of the curve here. I think this sh this should... Go well. I really like the differences in palette and the changes that have been made to the tiles. <laughs> Got it. You're not supposed to have been here yet. You should have not walked through the block and gotten the hard way around. That's Zelda? Oh, that looked like an ocarina. Hmm. Yeah, that looks like an ocarina. <laughs> That's an interesting touch. That was unexpected. It did a whole... Well, okay. I don't even know where we're at anymore. <laughs> Yeah, it does sort of look like one of those Mario ROM hacks, doesn't it? Okay, the damage boost there was just ridiculous. Okay, in the desert. <laughs> oh, and you use the flute here. Got it. That was a long pause. I was actually scared something went wrong. <laughs> The location you start here is kind of interesting. Okay. He had to scrounge up the rupees. Well, fair. I bet that was some amount of... <laughs> Maybe there's some manipulation there. Um, since I saved, switching weapons before the save won't, wouldn't have made a difference. This is only po possible... This, this is only possible con when you continue, not when you save. Glitching is used again to get somewhere at the right in the overworld, and even though the glitching passes areas that should, could, could normally not be reached, the part where I get to in the end can be reached without glitching. Here the flute is used to get money, so that's what happened earlier. It takes a long for the creature to spawn, the one that gives money. This cannot be avoided. After getting the money, I reset. Now I walk to level T to finally get my sword. Okay, that's where we're at. There are also bombs ready to pick up. Is that where this must be the bombs? Yes. Uh, I think... I think that's a bomb icon? It's hard to say. Uh, sure. Um... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, important to note that everything I did till now was, was in the right order of what the creator intended, so indeed the sword is in the third level. Wow. Flute was needed to get 
to get in to get into this level. Well, I'm assuming it's supposed to be get into. Um, after getting the sword, I exit the level to buy the bow again. Okay, so that was, oh, so we must have just bought the bow. Since the silver arrows are in the last level this time, we are ready to head there. Level C is located near the spot where you go uh, when you do the glitch at the start again, so that's convenient. This time the flute is needed to enter it. The seal is bypassed again by doing the glitch in the second room. Link makes and glitches his way to the room where the infinite key is located. <laughs> okay, so let's see how long it takes to get here. So as Amazing says, this is probably the most popular full game hack of Zelda 1. Yeah, I'd believe that. I wonder if this still works with crowd control. <laughs> <laughs> or it could be made to work with crowd I mean, Zelda 1 crowd control is the thing, right? I think so. I yet? I don't, actually, yeah, I didn't double yeah. check. Oh, there's the infinite key. Okay. Okay, after it is obtained, Lynx moves into the Wizro to a Wizrobe room. It was pretty hard since I could only use two bombs. In the end, the entire second quest will be completed with only four bombs. Okay. I don't know, was that... Okay. Those were Wizrobes? That didn't seem like Wizrobes. Yeah, just uh... Unless that's a different level. <laughs> Run away from the fairies. They're controlling me. Oh, that was mean. Wow. Okay. Is that was silver arrows? Yeah. I think so. Zombie Link, huh? So I guess you can't go under three hearts. I don't know. Um, okay. After the wizard room, Zelda wants to kill me, and after that, Link can pick up the silver arrow, then reset. Fully equipped Link heads for Ganon and kills him? Hmm. Yeah, let's see what happens. The, uh, this is not Dragon Quest. Sorry, I kind of didn't update the no. title. You don't know what it is, but I vote yes. Okay, so here's Ganon. Although Ganon's all messed up. It's not... It, it's Thunderbird. <laughs> so, have you played Zelda 2? Oh, yeah, yeah. So Thunderbird's the, the second to last boss. Got it. Okay. And then, the game continues. Oh, it's not the end. Not the end. And yes, it is also an email client that I use frequently. <laughs> okay, so this boss is apparently a total pain. That was really optimal. Okay. So that was that was the first late boss. <laughs> he finally flipped his lid. Oh, okay, there he is again. What? Okay. <laughs> That's one way to do it. But now the pattern is really cool. This guy takes a lot of help. Alright, ignore the money. Okay. How would you find that? <laughs> Old man tra? That's kind of funny. Alright. And... There's the old man again. And now there's fireballs being shot at you. Which can lag, apparently. Okay, so he's through another doorway. And we're still not done. <laughs> okay. I think that's it. Okay. 
So he said the last one was particularly hard since there were bullets coming from the corners of the room too, which could cause lag. Most of it was avoided. It was also hard to know where you were since everything was black in that room. There was there were quite some blocks blocking your way. In the end, Link saves the day once again. So that is officially the end of this task. The total runtime was 18 minutes and 54 seconds, so this was less than 19 minutes long. I think that this is a pretty good showing, and I would like to propose showing this at RPG Limit Break for the 2020 year, but we can try this at another event too. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for watching that. I'm going to stop this recording.